Right, so the time has come to cover every IT admin's favorite topic, printing. And printing in Windows 3 Drive does really work in pretty much the same way as it works in other scenarios. You can bring your local install printers or you can make use of a traditional print server or or you can make use of the universal print service from Microsoft, which is a bit more modern approach to printing. So in this video, I'll show you how bringing your local installed printers to your cloud PC works, tell you about how cloud PCs with a traditional print server works, but this video will probably be mostly about the universal print service and how that works, both in theory and practice with the universal print connector. Let's get to it. So like I mentioned, you can bring your locally installed printers with you when you connect to your cloud PC. And this usually works okay, but if you connect through a browser, you will notice that you don't actually get your locally installed printers. Instead, you get this cloud PC PDF printer. And the way this is meant to work is that you print to that printer from within your session, and then that printer outputs a PDF that gets downloaded by your browser, and then you can go ahead and print that PDF using your local device. Not the best experience, but at least it works, right? If you connect through the remote desktop app or the Windows 365 app, then your local printers actually get redirected and you can print directly to them without the extra step of printing that PDF file. So as you can see, I have my trusty HP LaserJet here and I can print directly to that if I want to. So I guess this is another way that the browser is a lesser user experience, I guess. This way of handling printing with Windows 365 will mostly cover most of your organization's printing needs, but where it might fall short is when you have printing needs that get a little more advanced. Like, for example, if you have advanced settings in your print drivers, stuff like stapling, booklets, and so on, or you regularly print large jobs with a lot of graphics and so on. In cases like that, you most likely already have a print server set up, and the good thing is that then you can use that for your cloud PCs as well, as long as there is a way for your cloud PCs to communicate with that print server, of course. So an express route or other site-to-site -side VPN connection would be needed. With that in place, you just treat your cloud PCs like any other device and provision printers to it through group policy, Intune, or any third-party device management you may be using. The benefit of such an approach is, of course, that you get a bit more control over your printing environment and a more stable and consistent user experience. The third way of handling printing in Windows 365 is the universal print service from Microsoft. Now, this isn't something unique to Windows 365. It is its own standalone service that you can use with any of your Windows devices. The universal print service sets out to solve a challenge that other third-party vendors like Printex have in part solved earlier, and that is how to solve centralized printing without servers. A common thing with these third-party solutions is the need for a computer with network access to the printer to function as a server. Print jobs would then be sent to this computer, which in turn handles the printing itself. And this is not a bad thing per se, don't get me wrong. I think that this is a good approach for organizations that are serverless. And in fact, Universal Print also have the option to work like this. But it's not actually a serverless solution then, is it? Well, being as large as Microsoft does have its benefits, because when they develop a new way of handling printing, then printer manufacturers kind of have to follow. And that's the case with Universal Print. Microsoft developed a new print infrastructure of their own, and now print manufacturers can integrate with that infrastructure. Having a printer that integrates with the universal print service has one major advantage. The printer communicates directly with universal print. That means that your user will send their print jobs to the cloud, and the cloud then sends the job directly to the printer without having to go via an agent on some computer which in turn means better stability and performance. If you don't have a printer with this functionality, then you can still use Universal Print. Like I mentioned, it can also work like a lot of these third-party solutions. And with Universal Print, this is called using a connector. You install the connector software on a computer, and then you can select which of the locally installed printers should be registered with the Universal Print service. That computer needs to be running Windows 10 or later, Pro or Enterprise, 
or you could install it on a Windows Server 2016 or later. So let me just show you how you would set up Universal Print with such a connector because buying a new printer with Universal Print integration isn't exactly within my budget. Now I have prepared a server for this demo and I have this demo printer 01 installed here. So what I want to do now is install the connector software and then register this printer with the Universal Print service. So I would go to the link down in the description in order to download the Universal Print connector. So let's just download the Universal Print connector software and install that. And then we launch the configuration. We need to sign in. So I'll just use my current account here. And then once the sign-in is complete, we get a list of available printers and you see our demo printer 01 here. So if I tick this box and then we can select register and then it will begin the process of registering this printer with Universal Prints, which in turn enables us to provision it to our users. And now that it's done registering, you can see it in the list of registered printers over here. Now, if you're wondering about the option for enabling hybrid AD configuration over here, that is if you have some piece of software that is dependent on grabbing a username from the spooler service to do something like keeping a counting of who prints how much, uh, follow me printing and stuff like that, then you need to enable this because then the universal print service will try to impersonate the AD user of the user that is printing. If you leave it as off, you know, like I have in my case, this will might mean that the print job will actually be in the system context. So the username that will be visible as a the printing user is system. But if you have no need for software like that, then just leave this as off, which is the case in my setup here. Now, with this now enabled, we can go back to the Azure portal and finish up the rest of the configuration there. And from the Universal Print section of the Azure portal, we can go to printers. And you see now that I have my demo printer 01. It's ready, but it's not shared yet. So let me click on this. And then we will click on share in order to, you know, share this printer with our users. So I'll grab these guys. If you want to, you can select allow access to everyone in my organization. But in my case, I'll stick with these guys and then click share printer. And once that is done, I should be able to add this printer on my cloud PC. So let's jump back to our cloud PC. And from within my cloud PC, I can, you know, on printers and scanners, click add device. And the demo printer on one will show up as a cloud printer here. And I can click add device. And as soon as that is done, I can now start printing to this universal print printer. And if I now print to this demo printer or one printer from my cloud PC, that means the print job is then sent to the universal print service, which in turn sends it to the connector software on my server which then processes the printing itself. And that is how you can use Universal Print, even though you don't have a Universal Print integrated printer. So now you know all the ways you can do printing with Windows 365. If this video was valuable to you, do leave a like. If it was bad, then leave a dislike. But I will also really appreciate if you can leave a comment down below with any things that I missed, suggestions or otherwise feedback. And uh, yeah, cheers.